I'm Karen Gregory, and I'm here with Dr. Jim Kanegi from the Burke Museum's Mammalogy Department, and we're watching uh, the sinking and recovery footage of the whale in Friday Harbor. Okay, like this first scene is up in, in, in Everett, where the uh, fin whale was located, this 54-foot-long young male fin whale, and there it is in the distance. This little boat's going up to hook a line onto the tail of the whale, and there's that line, and we're bringing it over to the Centennial, the big research vessel of the Friday Harbor Labs, to tow it all the way from Everett uh, up to the San Juan Islands. And here they're fixing up the attachment, and momentarily the Centennial will be underway to the San Juan Islands, just getting everything all hooked up there. And here we go. There's the whale following along behind uh, on its way to the San Juan Islands. Now what type of whale was it again? The fin whale. This looks like we're moving through the Swinomish Slough near the town of Laconner. That's a nice quiet waterway. Uh, then coming out through Anacortes and out the Guayma Strait. And uh, now we're at uh, Friday Harbor loading up these enormous railroad car wheels, which will be bound together as a weight to sink the carcass down to the to the seafloor. You'll see these all bound together and then tied onto the whale, whale's tail and the sinking after we get everything all organized here. David Duggins from the Friday Harbor Labs is in charge of the boat and this entire marine operation. That is an unusual way to prepare a specimen for an exhibit at a museum. Now we're going to be dropping those wheels over the edge, attached to the whale's tail, and down they go. And watch now, here goes the whale, down to the seafloor, around 100 feet depth at a location near the Friday Harbor Labs, where at this point in November, uh, degradation and decomposition begins. And this next scene now on the bottom with divers and an underwater rover is around 15 months later in winter of 2008. And you can see by that time, all of the soft tissues, skin, uh, intestines, muscle are completely gone. And the skeleton is really pretty well cleaned. There's a lower jaw, a mandible. You can see a big, beautiful orange sea star down there that may have been feeding on some of the other materials. And some of these are feeding now on microorganisms that are forming on the surface of the bones. There's a pile of ribs from the rib cage as it collapsed uh, off of the vertebral column, which you see in the further distance. vertebrae up close with the neural spines to which muscle is attached as part of the torso of the animal. It's a very small vertebrae uh, in the tail region. More ribs together up close, collapsed uh, off of their attachment to the spinal column as part of the rib cage. So about how long was this specimen? Uh, 54 feet was the length measurement, which places it in the cat and in the range of a, a fairly young, young adult or sub-adult uh, individual. We're just moving in for close-ups that show the uh, encrusting invertebrate organisms that are living on the surface and. Uh, the investigator from Hawaii, Craig Smith, is interested in these organisms and even microorganisms that are establishing themselves in this uh, nutrient resource uh, that they continue to colonize and, and uh, grow on long after the soft tissue is gone. You can see the vertebrae very much in place on the sea floor here. There's another big sea star feeding on the surface, some, some algae growing there. Another smaller sea star up on the uh, neural spines of the vertebral column. Base of some ribs off to the left there. A 
extreme close-ups. And with this nice color photography, one can see small encrusting biological organisms. I don't even know what that one is on top of that little spine. More of the tail vertebrae, and momentarily we'll see some divers arrive who were part of the inspection to gather up uh, just a couple of tail vertebrae so that the ecology team can examine directly the and, and sample the organisms that are growing on there. Here's our first diver. <coughs> and a second diver. Dive time is very limited at 100 feet uh, due to the need to avoid the bends, so perhaps 15 minutes of work at a time is all they can accomplish. Okay. Thank you.